Welcome to my lecture online. Now let's talk about the barometer and we're going to illustrate the barometer that was invented by Torricelli in the early 1600s. He was able to figure out the atmospheric pressure and that's what a barometer does. It measures atmospheric pressure and here we're trying to figure out the atmospheric pressure by using a barometer. And essentially it's a big tube of glass that we can fill with mercury. We have a little cup down below here that's also filled with mercury and then as you fill the tube with mercury you put your finger on one end, you turn the whole tube around, you push it into the little cup of mercury right here and then you allow the level of mercury to drop until it reaches the equilibrium. And what that means is that at the very top you'll have a vacuum, there's no air in there. You have a column of mercury there and of course we have the atmospheric pressure pushing outside on the mercury inside the cup. And there will be a balance right here at this point right there. So if you take a look at that in a little bit more detail, notice that the force pushing up which is caused by the atmospheric pressure and the force pushing down which is caused by the weight of the mercury, they must be equal at that point. Another way of looking at it is that the pressure caused by the column of mercury must equal the atmospheric pressure pushing from down below because we have the atmospheric pressure, atmospheric pressure pushing here and that will then translate into a push up at this, at this point which is equal to the pressure by the atmosphere at the top of that mercury right there. Keep in mind that the density of mercury is 13.6 grams per cubic centimeter or 13,600 kilograms per cubic meter. So it's a very dense liquid at room temperature. So if we then start with the idea that the atmospheric pressure is equal to the pressure caused by the mercury at this particular point and the pressure of course can be described as force over area. So we have the pressure of the atmosphere equals the pressure of the mercury and the pressure of the mercury will be equal to the force caused by the mercury divided by the cross-sectional area of the tube right there. And the force will be the weight of the mercury divided by the area and the weight can be defined as, notice here we have a an equation for density. Density is mass over volume, so the mass can be expressed in terms of the density times the volume. So in this case, we're going to replace the mass of the mercury by the density of the mercury and the volume of the mercury inside the tube times G divided by A. Now of course, the volume of the tube of the mercury inside the tube will be the height times the cross-sectional area, which is what we have over here. And then you can see that the areas cancel out and so we're left with the pressure, which is in this case the atmospheric pressure, will be equal to the density of the mercury times acceleration due to gravity times the height of the column. Now when Torricelli measured the height, it turned out to be 76 centimeters or 760 millimeters. And so because of that, they claimed that atmospheric pressure was equal to the column height of mercury of 760 millimeters, which they called tors after Torricelli. So the atmospheric pressure was 760 tor. But of course, if we put standard units in there, we have the density of mercury, the acceleration to gravity, the height of column in meters, and we end up with the atmospheric pressure being about 101,300 pascals. And that is how it's done.